So a while back I made a video about Turo and how all that works and uh, there were some questions that uh, weren't answered so we're going to try and get some better answers this time, some more specifics. Uh, I'm Brian, welcome to my test of the weekend. So I'm talking with Eric Prince who I met uh, at the Michigan Owners Club. Uh, we uh, were both uh, working here at the uh, big event in Muskegon. Very exciting. And yes, I know you guys gave me grief for calling it Muskegon, but uh, for the day, it is officially Muskegon. It's spelled the same. It's got Elon Musk in the name. It's very clever. It's very sneaky. So how did you get started on Turo? So actually, um, I've, I've not been doing it a super long time, really, just since the beginning of this year. Um, but I actually had, you know, some friends that had got into it um, and they were telling me about it. And, you know, I, I really saw the, a good market for it in my area. So um, I actually had an extra car. And so I really originally just started with that car. And, you know, my thought was kind of, let's just see how this goes and then go from there if it goes well. And you started renting cars, renting your own car. And <clears throat> what kind of money were you getting? Yeah, so um, I was actually, it was a little bit more than I expected just because, um, you know, I, I use Turo's automatic pricing where they basically set the price for you on a daily basis and it really, de you know, depends on many factors like the time of day, um, if there's any holidays going on, time of week, stuff like that. Um, and I've, I found over time that if you don't use their automatic pricing and you set your own pricing manually, um, that basically it, it seems like you get less booking so therefore it makes sense to use their automatic pricing. but. Um, that being said, I'd say even in like the slower season, which is generally the winter, um, it's anywhere from, you know, 50, 50 some dollars a day to, you know, well over a hundred dollars a day in the busy months, like in the summer. So in the summer you can, if it's out, even most of the month to get two, three grand. Yeah. And I mean, and the one thing I will say too, is that, um, you know, the, those numbers, of course, you're not getting a hundred percent of that because, you know, you, you have to still factor in Turo's fees, what they're taking, stuff like that. Um, but as far as just the daily price that the actual guest is paying, I'd say that's around the range that you'd be getting. So let's say your payment is 800. Well, what is your payment? Yeah, so actually the, the first car I put up there was my Model 3 and that one, because I had such a big down payment, that one was only 291 a month. So, I mean, if you have cars like that where the payment is relatively low, it actually, you know, kind of helps offset even cars maybe that have a higher payment if there's a month they didn't perform as well. All right, and then you added a second car. Yeah. Um, so then I, I actually for a while was driving a Model Y. That's the car that I was keeping for myself to drive. Um, but I, I guess actually I should go back a little bit. The, the, the car right after that was actually a Model S that I got. Um, and I was still driving my this Model Y that I had um, for myself. Um, so yeah, the Model S would have been the second one I put on there. So the Model S. And was that new or used? It was used. And what did you pay for it? Uh, I think it was like 49 something. Okay, so a very affordable fleet car. Yeah. And that rents out, uh, how does it compare to a Y or a 3 in terms of the rentals? Um, yeah, it, it actually it actually rents for more than those ones do. And I would say that, um, you know, in certain times I've actually noticed where the car, the Model S has actually been, you know, rented out more than even the Model 3 has. And I think that's also partly because it's the less common model that's on there. Interesting. So now how many cars do you have on Turo? Let's see. So got the Model 3, Model Y, Model S, um, Buick Encore, and then in the past, about the past like week, week or week and a half, we've added um, a Fiat 500 and a Chevy Cruze, and so now we're up to six. So six, and let's talk the... Actual... Oh, sorry, I missed one, Nissan Sentra, so actually we're at seven. Seven. So, and on these you're putting as little down payment as possible. Explain the thinking there. Yeah, so... Um, you know, of course, if you're at a bigger scale, I think it, it definitely makes sense to buy the cars outright because, um, you know, you, you would save money on the interest. But, you know, as far as where I'm currently at or just kind of starting this as a new business, I think, you know, you want to leverage your money and, you know, be able to scale the fleet as quickly as possible because that's really what's, you know, that's, it's, this is kind of a all about a scale thing. So, you know, the more cars you have, the more the more profit you're going to see. So with that being the case, you know, we pretty much finance all of them and the, the goal is to put down the lowest amount of money possible. Um, you know, so because I mean, I, I know for all of these cars that we have on there that we can, you know, pretty easily, it doesn't take many rentals to generate the car payment and then even other expenses and then some on top of that. And so the same thing happens in real estate where let, let's say it's 10,000 that you've got that you can work with. Do you put a $10,000 down payment or do you put two $5,000 down payments 
or do you just do a five thousand dollar down payment and keep the five thousand extra to cover other things um, it's all about scale and the more of them you can get going the the more potential there is for upside uh, if because if you're making you know a, a thousand a month profit on an individual car wouldn't you like to have twice as many yeah and that's well and that's exactly my thinking I think that you know so let's say you have twenty twenty five thousand dollars sitting there and you know maybe it'd be enough to buy one cheap car but you know what what if you could twenty thousand dollars do four cars with a five thousand dollar down payment you know and you know if, if you're let's say you're even making an average of five hundred dollars a month profit per car well let's say you have ten cars that's all of a sudden five thousand dollars because it's all about the scale versus if you had one paid off car um you know yeah you'd, you wouldn't have the car payment but i think in the end you're still going to be making less money just because it's one car you know versus four cars right and or yeah or or ten cars and so on and then you can also make extra payments of course your bank doesn't mind that and you can uh, expand the fleet more quickly. Uh, what are some words of caution? It looks like we will be able to sneak out. Now. Okay. Uh, what are some What are some words of caution that you would uh, offer people who are uh, thinking about doing a Turo fleet? Yeah. So I would say um, I would say number one, you really need to kind of do a little bit of research and know your market well enough because you don't want to um, you know get cars that potentially won't do well in your market. So I think you know. The goal is that the cars are going to be gone as much as possible and if you have a model or something that doesn't really fit your market you know it's possible that you know it's, it's going to be sitting a lot more than it's rented out mm -hmm. so i'd say that's number one and then um number two i would say is that you know just kind of a lot of this stuff is is obviously part of the business that you get into but just kind of be aware of those risks and the things you'll be aware of those risks and the things that you'll deal with when you get into this type of business um, because you know a lot of people you know you even sometimes want to be as a lot of people make it seem easy and it's definitely not um, you know it is time consuming you do deal with a lot of issues from you know renters or people that damage the car stuff like that so again that's stuff that's all part of the business but I'd say just something to kind of you know keep in mind and don't think that you know it's just gonna it can have the potential to be like good passive income when you get to a certain point but it's definitely not that way off the bat especially when you're running everything yourself and you can have issues where it's it's little things that are unavoidable, like a flat tire or right. or uh, an un unexpected repair when the car is two towns over or or even farther. Um, there are it, it, it's no guaranteed money maker, but there are a lot of people um, who've who've done quite well with it. Um, how hard is it to get financing when you've already got five six cars? Yeah, so so far I haven't ran and I mean I, I haven't just in my own personal situation I haven't ran into a big issue but that's because you know I I keep going through the same place and because of my kind of you know, good payment history with them and stuff like that I think it makes it a lot easier to get approved at this point but you know it, it's not a situation where I you know I think I could just go around and find any bank under the sun that's going to approve me obviously because they're going to you know if I don't have any history with them they're going to look and say oh you already have this many loans open you know we're not going to offer you a line of credit or anything so I think it's one of those situations where if you you know, have a good relationship with a bank or someone that you're currently working with and they see that you're consistently making all these on-time payments and you're paying them a lot of money every month, then, you know, that same bank is more likely to approve you for another loan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, the question then is, uh, what did we miss? Is there anything I missed that you, that uh, you should be telling people? Um, well, what kind of income are we looking at? Uh, after expenses, not counting paying yourself because you are the business. At the end of the month on seven cars, how much money's uh, coming in? Yeah, so I would, I mean, we've been, I don't have it right off the top of my head, but I'd say we've been averaging like pretty consistently, you know, $500 a month profit per car. So if you know, we just times that by seven cars. Yeah. And so, and that's of course not paying ourselves or anything because, you know, right now our goal is to just get the cars paid off as quickly as possible because you know it, it's one of those things that's you know this this business is definitely somewhat of the kind of long-term mindset where you're looking at you know where are you going to be five years from now if you have x amount and the car is paid off you know the numbers get significantly better if, if the car payment goes away because that's your biggest expense you know so i think if we you know right now if we can make extra payments pay these loans down early and pay the cars off in like half the time you know then by the time they're they're paid off um you know where the numbers are definitely going to greatly improve at that point Oh, and I know what we forgot to mention. Uh, Eric, uh, how old are you? I'm 21. So I'm looking back at what I was doing at 21, and uh, my um, business track was not uh, 
quite as uh, quite as uh, aggressive as this. And uh, so that's a little bit inspiring and motivating. Awesome. Eric, I appreciate you giving me the time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave in the comments. What questions do we need to ask next time? Uh, so in the meantime, you guys, uh, why don't you a big thanks to the patrons. You can also become a YouTube member. That's a thing now. Uh, apparently, I've got one of those now. Interesting. And so for everyone else, uh, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you. Have a robot uh, somewhere else, I guess.